if that's all we're getting, that's all that's close to me, and the next place is Hamilton or London, and I'm not fucking driving there for some rhubarb beer. Beer tubers, welcome back to Max Wolf Star. And <laughs> your analysis what right I in there. <laughs> right in there, yes. Uh, excuse Jamie's ramblies, but I, I'm still glad that he actually joined us this week. Um, anyway, uh, getting down to business, we are going to do for this week's episode another beer from Collective Arts. Speaking of Hamilton, we're taking a look at Life in the Clouds IPA uh, from Collective Arts. Uh, their hazy uh, New England style beer, which uh, and our first yeah, panel member here that actually got it all the way across the pond in, in the UK. Kent, Craig at Kent Beer Reviews. Glad to have you with us, and uh, how are you doing tonight? Yeah, all well, good. Um, nice to see these beers finally get it over, over in the UK. I'm supposed to be getting a lot more of this stuff. I've been here. Uh, yeah. Excited to try some other stuff. From them. Yeah, it's, it's actually kind of nice to see the like collective arts making it over there. It seems to be a lot of it, uh, a lot yeah. of the stuff is getting over there recently. Yeah, the 10 minute walk for me, this, this can, so it's like that's the closest now. Wow, and and even more impressive if you, you seem to have a fresher can than I do. Mine's from August 13th, yours is what, August 28th? Uh, you, uh, 27, yeah, so it's like crazy. Yeah, like two weeks newer. Yeah. Anyway, speaking of the freshest of the freshest, hey, Greg, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Not to swing my dick around or anything, but mine was canned on October 16th. Yeah, yeah. Swing your dick around. I think that's the same age that Ashley's is, isn't it? Ashley and I love sharing things the same age. Oh, Other than that, Greg, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing, I'm doing just great, Nick, especially since I got my hangout work and I didn't have to sit this one out and have you guys be boring. Yeah, yeah, we almost didn't have you on the panel tonight. Yeah, almost might have discussed the beer. Almost worked. All right, so moving along to one person who rarely comes on, but we're always glad that he does. We're always glad you came, just like Cheers or the bar or whatever. Anyway, hey, Jamie from Basement Beer Review. How are you doing tonight? I'm good. Thanks for having me, Nick. No problem. I'll try to be professional. Oh, I'm sure you will. Uh, and speaking of uh, profession, the professional professionals, we got this always last, but never, never that bad. Anyway, whatever. Never that bad. <laughs> what a warm endorsement. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not sure I'll go with this. <laughs> How are you doing tonight? Well, I sounds like I'm not really wanted here by you, so that's okay. But I'm going to be here anyways. Because, you're you're yeah. a silver medal, Ashley. <laughs> I uh, thanks, David. I, that that warms my heart a little bit. I appreciate that. Thank you. Old star in your report. Yeah. Right, at least you get a sticker. <laughs> participant. Yes, participant. There we go. It's fu it's fun to sticker. Where's my fucking ribbon? Where's my damn participation ribbon? <laughs> damn it! All right. All right so uh, let's uh, move along to the uh, the history on collective arts and since. This is the fourth beer we've looked at from Collective Arts. We won't go too much detail other than to cover the basics and say the Collective Arts was founded in 2013 by Matt Johnson and Bob Russell. Johnson and Russell, along with brewmaster Ryan Morrow, began brewing on contract space at Nickelbrook in Burlington, uh, Ontario. Um, Collective Arts and Nickelbrook opened a joint brewery in Hamilton a year later at the site of the former Lake, Lake Port Brewery. Uh, Collective Arts has since, though, uh, bought out Nickelbrook shares in the brewery and now operates as as their main brewery with their production and volume di and distribution to reach across Canada into the U.S. and apparently some into the U.K. as well. Uh, in November 2017, Collective Arts introduced Life in the Clouds as Hazy IPA originally. Uh, Hazy IPA sold out within days and Collective Arts quickly decided a month later to add the beer to their lineup as a year-round entry into the I Hazy IPA craze. So Life in the Clouds is a 6.1% ABV, New England-style IPA brewed with Simcoe in Mosaic Ops. I think Joe would appreciate the Mosaic, although I don't think he's a big fan of uh, Simcoe. So that's, yeah, that's it. And... I guess we could take a look and see if there's any comments, maybe. Yeah, we actually have a couple. Uh, uh, the, 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 Jamie, you want to do some reading? And you're muted. Would you Sorry. like me to read them, Nick? I don't have it open. You I can it. read it in about 10 seconds. I will open it up. Sure. We believe in you, Jamie. 
Reading on your parade. Thank you for including America on Beer Analysis 101 tonight. Got a can. My date is July 23rd, 2018. 11.99 a four pack. Cheers. Lee Russell right. says, "Holy s, it's Jamie. Good stand-in for my usual awesomeness." I disagree. I uh, inferior and uh, wish you were here. Which is a good song. Ethan's beer reviews. Hey guys, Nick, you have a great live show. Keep it up, man. And use any glass that you shall desire. Well then, wasn't that a nice, nice open ah, round of comments? First of all, thank you, Ethan. And second of all, I wanted to say to Jamie that uh, your your beer tube's the uh, greatest hockey dad, by the way. I'm always excited to find out Ethan's not dead. Short. All right, so let's get down to personal histories, and we'll start off with the uh, the UK guy, uh, Craig. What's your history with collective arts and uh, life in the cloud specifically? Um, yeah. But Quite a few collective arts, well, four or five different beers. Um, first, they had their um, Ransack Universe last June for the first time. I thought, well, that's quite impressive that. That was on draft. Um, really good. This year, um, I had a can about a week and a half. Uh, done a review on it. So, yeah, fairly recent kind of history of this beer. Um, but yeah, been quite impressed with some of the other beers from them. Uh, yeah, see how we go with this one in a bit. All right, uh, Mr. Greg, what's your history with this? And you're already face deep in it, which is not a surprise. Mm -hmm. I love to get right on in there. Uh, I've had it once before. I had it after IP number five. I kind of got excited because, as we all know, we all liked IP number five. I think everyone liked it. Uh, and I got excited. They created another beer similar to IP number five, although 2% lower in alcohol. So not that similar, but the same idea. And I had it once before, and I haven't had it since then. Does that mean I didn't like it? I don't know. You'll have to f wait to find out. All right, then. And uh, Jamie, Berserker. <laughs> Yeah. Where are you, Beer Zerker? Right. What's your history I've, with uh, with I've had it uh I think twice before. Uh it's it's uh one that I like. I uh I'm kind of hit and miss with collective arts. Um I like, you know, probably one out of every two beers kind of thing with them. Uh their IPA series. I uh got on at the top of the roller coaster and now they are going quite down far far six and seven were uh not uh not favorites of mine for sure so um i'll let you know how i like it in a bit but yeah i've had like there's probably 10 different beers from these guys that i've tried so and i've been to the brewery Ooh, with me. yeah you were there with me and uh who else is there it was chris mm -hmm. chris and joe mm -hmm. Yeah. Cheers. Uh, Mr. Ash. Uh, yeah, history. I mean, much like most of the other panel members, um, you know, this stuff is widely available all over the place. Uh, I've pretty much had at least one of everything new that they come out with that's available in the LCBO. I don't really go out of my way to go to the to the brewery itself. But uh, yeah, I've, I've had this one before. Um, all I will say is that I did enjoy this one more than IPA number five for reasons I'll explain later. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I find with, with Collective Arts, as long as they stick with their uh, with their basic core, uh, I, I'm usually really happy with the product I get. Sometimes when they go a little bit out there, like they did with IPA number six, and they're adding all the adjuncts and all that dumb shit, then that's sort of when they fall off for me. But um, yeah, that's all I got for, for Collective Arts. Uh, for the most part, pretty solid beers. And uh, yeah, I do have a, a short history with this one. I think we all do uh, with life in the clouds uh my personal history with collective arts and well i'll start with collective arts the first time i ever had a collective arts beer was i think saint of circumstance which showed up here in summer 2014 as the leftovers from the pickaroons brewers bash what they used to do is uh, there used to be this big uh, open air beer festival that they had up in Fredericton before uh nb liquor got their mitts on it and changed the changed the rules 
but they what they used to do is they would bring in all the beer for that festival. Anything that didn't get sold, they'd distribute to the major centers, uh, major beer uh, and indie liquor stores across the province. And we'd be able to get a crack at all this this beer that uh, um, didn't uh, that didn't sell at the beer fest. And you get all kinds of awesome shit from all across the country. And uh, I remember I spent like two hundred dollars on beer. Um, it had you know, with a shopping cart <laughs> in my first visit. And one of the beers I picked up, I'd heard of Collective Arts uh, from, I think, Albino Rhino, because we had just started doing BDU uh, about a year, less, little less than a year before that. And uh, I'd, I'd been hearing of the brewery, so I wanted to try it. Um, I wasn't that impressed with Saint and Circumstance, but I've had a number of their other beers in, 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 over the history. I've even had, like, I think I've had IPAs number one, number three, number five, and number six, thanks to that last one, thanks to Ash, and of course, Liquid Arts Fest. And li the uh, Life in the Clouds for me was actually one that was uh, that kind of eluded me because NB Liquor got Life in the Clouds back in May of, uh, of this year just before, and I remember seeing it on the shelf, just before I went to Ontario for the Albino Runner Beer Fest. And when I went up there, uh, like I, I didn't buy it because I thought, okay, maybe I'll have it when I'm in Ontario. And when I got to Ontario, uh, Chris, Chris Lisak actually had a can of this waiting for me in the fridge and I was going to do a review of it. And he, uh, I, we drank a lot of beer over the course of that week and I actually never got to it. And I also didn't try it when I visited the brewery back in May either. Or at the beer at the Albino River Beer Fest, because and I was thinking like, well, shit, I didn't get it. I'll get it when I come back home. Maybe we can do a beer analysis one on one on it. And I think we had actually even decided we were going to do a beer analysis one on one on this beer. And then I looked at the list of uh, of where I can get this beer in the province, and was like, sold out everywhere except for Moncton. And I'm like, fuck. So lucky for me though, they brought another batch of this. Uh, uh, batch I got this from back uh, last last month, I think. So I was kind of ecstatic when I saw it in the shelf because this is one that kind of did me for all of six months and happy about finally trying it. What my thoughts are, we'll have to wait and see. One. Nick, can you hold your can up for a second there? Okay. Yeah, yours just says IPA. Mine actually says India Pale Ale. So I was just, mine also says India Pale Ale. Yeah. I mean, obviously it's the same thing, but I was just sort of. Some of them, if you go to the Collective Arts' website, some of their their early earliest cans, I think, actually said Hazy IPA right there as well. Yeah, I, I believe that's correct. So this is like three variants. Other, so they, they must have changed it to IPA recently. So this is probably the newest cans. Well, also, also don't forget, like they use different artwork for, like I bet you your artwork's probably different than no, my artwork's the oh, same. No, yours is the same. What about yours, Ashley? Is yours different than this? I've got that one. Okay, he's got the spaceman on it. So, and what do you got, Craig? Uh, yeah, spaceman. The spaceman, and what do you got, Jamie? The one oh, this is the first one. So, like some storm or something on a boat. Uh, okay. Anyway, yeah. All right. Yeah, and that's one of the things that actually Collective Arts, for those who don't know, does is they'll actually support the local art community and get people to submit artworks that they uh, will put on their can. Although I think they moved this that that project art or something, whatever they call it, uh, internationally because I think the art on mine is from some guy uh, uh, from some guy from New York. And uh, what's I, I don't know I, I know the website actually mentioned the art uh, the art that they had listed on the website was from somebody in the UK so they must be coming from all over now. Mine is Annabelle Papa from New York City. Yeah, mine's what, what's this guy's name? Yu Ming Huang, New York, New York. Right on. All right, let's uh under and go to more comments and we got rod in the chat i see yeah yeah rod yeah. rod says rod j beer venture says cheers fellas cheers rod rod cheers, helping america turn blue again eric gilbert says cheers fools ethan's yeah. beer review says i lurk in the shadows baby and roger beer venture says still talking <laughs> number five ipa number five 
Well, uh, it, it's I actually have a tattoo uh, IPA number five. It's my whole back here. Yeah. Uh, you should see Chris Lysax. If you oh, guys here's have a, here's a tramp stamp. <laughs> yes. If you guys have a chat after, I'll try and join on my phone. Ethan's beer review says. Okay. And we do do that. Rating on your pro. Rating on do your do. Rating. <laughs> Yes. Hashtag. I have had this beer once before, and this old can is still great. First can I had was, I think, like two months ago, or two months old. I've had a couple others from Collective Arts, and they are a great brewery. And then Craft Beer Pours says, cheers, everyone. Cheers. Cheers to the active comments. Yeah. Love Waiting it. on your parade. Why aren't you canned up doing this review with us? Thanks for... Uh... Thanks for commenting. Making you were great again. Making you were great again. Hmm. Was he ever great before? That's a good point. Like 40, 50 years ago, yeah. In his, you know, in his 30s. Oh. Yeah, back in the Middle Ages. Mm -hmm. All right. Anyway, uh, moving right along, let's go back over to Mr. Craig and see what his final thoughts on this beer are. Uh, is that sort of, I don't know. Where it's the water or whatever, is it? I'm getting a little bit chalky to it. Um, I don't know what it is. Um, pretty light, very kind of delicate. Um, for a six point, is it six point one? Six point one percent. It's it's damn easy drinking. It's uh, it's almost like a slight creaminess with that as well. Um, I'm getting a little bit of kind of a uh, fruit salad kind of thing going on with it. Uh, maybe a little bit of pineapple, mango, that sort of sort of jazz. But yeah, it's, it's very um, very harsh at all. There's no kind of bitterness as such. I'm from my palate at least. Um, it's just a damn coughable beer and not picking up the ABV and it's, just, it's, just, it's gliding down. Um. It's got a bit of sediment in the bottom of the, the glass, but whatever, it doesn't bother me. Um, it's okay, I think I enjoyed it better a couple of weeks ago than, than this one, um, for some reason. I don't know for why, I think it's the same batch. I mean, a week's not going to make it much odd, especially if you can. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's solid. Solid beer. Um, if they keep it up to that sort of standard all of the time, then it's, uh, it's another sign of a, a good brewery, I guess. Um, in terms of rushing in, um, I'd give this my personal enjoyment a four out of five, so it's an eight out of ten. Uh, the style. I don't know. I'll give it a 3.75. Uh, seven and a half, isn't it? Uh, yeah. That's some good mathing, Nick. Uh -huh. <clears throat> oh, yeah, so it's it's yeah, it's solid. Solid. Yeah. I've got another one as well. <laughs> I'm writing down the scores just so you know, Nick. Oh, you're gonna do okay. Cool. Yeah. All right. I wouldn't trust Nick either. All right. I don't have to. Hey, I'm gonna. I don't have to do any of this. This is awesome. All right. Speaking of not doing any of this, let's go. Um, let's go over to Greg. What's your? Uh, you, you know me. Okay. So, as I was saying earlier, I got excited when this came out because it's like, oh, IPA number five is really good, and I really loved IPA number five. I did not love it as much as Chris, but I still thought it was really good. It was really, really good beer, and it was actually probably the first New England style IPA that I actually enjoyed. From Ontario, because quite frankly, I think Ontario makes crap beers in that style, including the Bellwoods ones. Sorry, uh, sorry to the artist previously known as Redbeard. Um, so I got excited when I had this, and it's not a bad beer, but in comparison, it's kind of disappointing. Although I do think it's also like a buck fifty cheaper. I forget exactly what this is. So, I mean, I guess you're also paying less for it. For it's less alcohol, but it's a lot less flavor. It's very smooth, and to me. I don't remember thinking this when I had this 
months ago for the first time. But to me, this doesn't remind me, this doesn't make me think of a New England IPA anymore. Like this to me is almost like they, they mixed the New England IPA. Like there's hints of it, but it they almost seems like they mixed it with like just an East Coast, like really fruity tropical uh, IPA. Um, so I don't know, like I almost suspect they changed the recipe, but maybe that's just my crazy, that's just my crazy memory. So what it is, is it's good. It's a good beer, but if you're looking for something like IPA number five, in my opinion, or like a really good, like an American yes. New England style IPA, this is not what, this is not it. Uh, so it's going to be 7.5 all around for me for style. Um, I mean, it's certainly not bad. I, I kind of question whether it's, whether it's on par with the style. I'll actually be curious to know what Ashley thinks about it since he's tends to have a pretty good palate for these things. Um, and it's enjoyment for me the same. It's, it's a good beer, not a great beer. <clears throat> and I agree with all those fruit notes that Craig, that Craig said, but I'm not going to just copy him because you can just rewind and listen to what he said. <laughs> Yeah, what what Greg, uh, Craig said, that's what everybody thinks. Anyway. Yeah. All right. Uh, moving right along, let's go over to Mr. Jamie. Uh, for me, it's a it's a it's a good beer. It's not it's not great, but it has it has there's good and bad to it. The two things that I don't really like about uh, some IPAs, um, one of them is I I don't really care for double IPAs. Like I don't really want the high alcohol level. I like you know five six percent. So this is this is within that uh, close enough. And uh, the other thing is there's certain IPAs that just have this taste that I don't like. Um, and I I don't know where it comes from. I'm not a brewer, and I haven't been able to find like it, if it's a specific hop. I don't think it is because uh, like three of them that I can think of ransack. Um, IPA number seven, Octopus Wants to Fight. They all have this flavor that just kind of turns me off. And uh, this doesn't have it. It, it j has a little tinge of it at the start, but uh, not too much. But it's um, it's it's good. It's easy drinking. It's uh, it's a nice light beer for, a, you know, what is it, 6.1%? Yeah, 6.1%. And... Uh, uh, it, it just doesn't have that juiciness though, like compared to IP number five or whatever. Um, it's more, it's, it's more like a, how do I say it? It's like eating a melon compared to eating an orange. Like it doesn't have that sweet, um, sweet flavor. So if you're really into the juicy IPAs, this one isn't for you. It'll do the trick, but it's just not, uh, it's not, to me, it's not orangey. It's more, it, it has more like a, a, a muted, melon type of taste and uh i but I, I do like it i enjoy it i would never you know not drink this beer if it was uh, the only thing around so um for style i'll give it a seven and for personal i'll give it a 7.25 nice very astute observation i see what you mean about the melon now that you say it uh okay so moving right along over to uh mr ashley sexton Last, but certainly not least. I think that's what well, I wanted to say the first time. But I'm not last. You're last. Ah, that's true. Yes, it's true. Yes. You're never last. I am. You are. And he's last. least. <clears throat> last and least. There we go. Oh, wait a minute. He's the finisher. God. Yeah. Um. Finisher. All right. Let's all go with that. So you know, comparing that's this dirty. one. To... <laughs> it's so dirty. Um. Comparing this to IP number five, uh, right off the bat, I, you know, when I had this for the first time, it was shortly after it, I had had IP number five, and I did like this better, or more, whatever. Um, I found IP number five to be a little bit too sweet. It was just, it just wasn't for me. It just wasn't to my taste. Um, this one again with a slightly lower ABV, uh, I, I thought it was a little bit more of a, a better rounded beer uh, with regards to the bitterness. And the aromas and the flavors and the mouthfeel, it just sort of worked a little bit better to me than IPA number five. It's not saying it's my favorite beer of all time or that it's a fucking world class or anything like that. But um, the aroma itself, uh, I think Craig said it, it when it was like a, it's like a, a basket of fruit. Um, this is very much a, a very tropical nose to it, uh, a lot of like overripe. Uh, 
overripe mango, papaya, melon, um, you know, uh, all, all of those like tropical style aromas uh, that you probably pull it out from the mosaic. Um, I found the sip. Uh, it's funny. The sip is different than the aroma. Uh, on the sip, I'm getting more citrus notes. I'm getting grapefruit pith to it. I'm getting some sweet tangerine as well, like like sweet tangerine on the front, but I'm getting like a bitter like grapefruit pith on the back. Slight, not aggressive, like like not like West Coast like super aggressive bitterness, but I definitely picked it up a little bit more now than I think I did back then. Um, the body is nice, and I don't know. You probably can't tell, but I did a roll on this before I poured it. This thing. I have never had so many floaties in this. Wow. Uh, and and I don't care about the floaties. I could give two shits. Um, and I'll probably give like three and a half shits tomorrow after eating all this. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that um, it's uh, – wh wh where was I? Um, you know <laughs> – it's the, the, the mouth feels nice. It's, it's medium body, but you know what? It's it's not as creamy. Like, you know, I I was looking at yeah your can earlier. I was I was I was hoping that they would call this a, a New England IPA so I could call them out on it because to me this doesn't represent a New England IPA. It doesn't say it on the can that they just call this an IPA. It's what um, they call it on their website. Yeah, it it, it lacks that that creamy mouth feel that you get. I'd be really curious to see how much like what their the, their grain percentages are and whatnot. Um, if they're going for a New England style, they better bump up the oats a little bit in this. Um, but I mean, it drinks well. You don't you don't get the six point one percent, which I think is what a lot of people liked about number five is that you couldn't tell it was eight or whatever it was. Um, but yeah, uh, the the mouth feels a little little bit of a letdown. Um, but uh, I mean, overall, I mean, it's a solid beer. I mean, I I can't shit on it too much. Uh, I, would, I would happily drink it again. Uh, I would definitely go out and get a can. I'm surprised it's actually taken me this long to actually have this one again. Uh, personal enjoyment, I'm going to give this a seven and a half for style. I'm just going to call this an IPA. Um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grade this as an IPA. I'm going to give it a seven. Um, just because mouth feels a little off. Uh, wasn't quite there for what I, I would want. So and that and 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 actually, yeah, because the the aroma and the, and the taste are two completely different things. It's like two different beers for me. But that, that's what I got. So, seven and a half for personal enjoyment and seven for style. Right on. Gotcha. All right. Now time to give my two cents. And before I do, I'm just going to actually go follow up uh, what Ashley said here with uh, it being, uh, it does say New uh, New England style IPA right on the website for, uh, for Life in the Clouds. It even says Hazy IPA in the can that they have in their picture. But uh, it doesn't say anything about uh, what they used for the malt, uh, for the, uh, the malt, the grain bill on this thing. But um, my personal thoughts on it is that I, I didn't really get a, a huge amount of the smell. I'm not really getting something that would strike me as super juicy in either the smell or the taste. Quite, uh, quite frankly, I, I'm kind of wondering if maybe the age played a little bit of part in uh, in the flavors that I'm getting, but based on what you guys are all saying i don't think so uh, i think you yeah, ash and greg have got some pretty fresh cans and uh it sounds the same as what i'm having right here really close to it i'm getting maybe a, a touch more resin in the in the back a little hint of earthy resin or something but it's uh, it, i'm getting the notes of tangerine i'm getting bits of lemon i'm getting mango uh just like jamie as soon as jamie said melon i get like yeah i get kind of like a little bit of cantaloupe in, in it a little pithy. Uh, the hops have definitely almost come across as faded, but you know it's 50 IBUs. It's not really that strong anyway. Uh, there's a light juice to it, but uh, it's very sudsy. And quite frankly, my can's getting a little, a uh, little uh, sweaty as well. Like there's like a, a hint of like a sweat astringency in the very background, which you know what? And you know what the weirdest thing is? is as soon as I I stirred up my can and poured the rest in it. I'm almost getting like this oniony hop burn as well. And it's kind of weird. This can is what five months old or four months old. I think four months. I didn't know three months old and it's still getting that. You think that would have tamed team down and there's a lingering resin coming off top of that. And it's, it's just, you know, for something that was like, I like new England style IPAs. Most of the ones that I've had so far, or any company that's actually done one has done a really smash up job. And IPA number five, especially, was 
was actually I didn't like it as quite as much as as you guys did, but I didn't have as fresh a can as you guys did either. But at the time I did have it, I found it really to be quite a solid beer. This one here, in comparison to IPA number five or other, even other hazy IPAs that I've had from Collective Arts, it's just kind of been just this one's a little touch on the letdown side. But um, maybe some point I'll be able to get to try a fresher can, but I don't think my results are going to be quite that. I think this is one that maybe Collective Arts should be paying attention to. Is like maybe your quality's dropped off, or it could be the fact that maybe you need to dial it in, make it a little more sweeter, because I think that it needs something like this should be a little bit more juicier, should be a little touch sweeter in order to bring out the juice flavors more. Because you're right, Jamie, you got that that kind of thing where it's like eating a melon rather than than uh, where it is not that sweet. Anyway, um, my personal thoughts on this is that uh, for the style of a uh, New England style IP, I'm going to give it a seven because when you look at the appearance and you drink the actually drink it, it's not bad, uh, but it's not the best. And um, as far as personal enjoyment, I was thinking 3.25 out of five, for my out of five rating scale, so six and a half. And that's my over overly opinionated opinion. So, uh, holy crap, do we ever have a lot of comments? And I see that uh, you were stirring the shit up in the pot. Anybody want to tackle those comments? Oh, great. what else is new? Baby, he's probably wet himself. Now he's grumpy. There are plenty of there are plenty of relevant comments. So, all yeah. right, go for it. <laughs> okay, Teku Murray, fuck off, Jamie. <laughs> no. Whoa! <laughs> Where's comedy reads is from Ewart. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the dude needs his diaper changed. It's like Jamie reads I'm just going to go behind the curtain here again for a sec. Nick, the two numbers that I put in there, uh, the first one is style, the second one is uh, first one. Yeah, seven out of style, case. six and a half out of what? Oh, hold on. A no, in the in the group chat. Oh, you're, you're giving me that. Okay, you want me yeah. to do, shoot, I don't have the artwork ready. Okay, give me a moment. Yeah, that's oh. just so you can do the artwork. Yeah. Uh, Teku Murray also says, I am watching this shit. Why? I have no idea. And then some other stuff. Rajay Beer Ventures. Hope Jamie is recording better than some of our voting machines. LOL. Uh, yep. I'm. Wah, uh, wah, wah, wah. Schmack, I have a paper and pencil, and I, I do have an old school calculator here that I can use. Oh, Bacchus. Um, Teku, Teku Murray says Jamie likes ac alcoholic apple juice. Nice. Grab them by the Jamie. Rob JV Adventure <laughs> says that's Greg. That uh, is Greg. Actually, no, sorry, I missed a Teku Murray's uh, uh, comment here. I love Greg. How Greg blames his shitty palate on batch variation. That's not true. I feel batch variation works hand in hand with my shitty palate. Yeah. Um, Rob J. Beer Ventures baby palate for Jamie. Um, Eric a lot Gilbert. of attacks on Jamie tonight. Yeah, hipster juice. It's all hey, bring it on. I love it. Uh, well, you put yourself out there. You no, make yourself a target. No voting machine errors. User errors. Make America great again. Hmm. Oh, uh, yeah, that, that has on, to be your. <laughs> yeah, raining on your parade. Wow, lots of sed sediment on the bottom. Nowhere near the first can I had. Uh, basement beer says enough with the IPA. Jeez. Teku Murray can't says, had absolutely no sediment. I don't know why. Sorry, Jamie. Uh, Teku Murray uh, responding to raining on your parades. Lots of sediment comment. Uh, he says your sediment on the bottom. Oh. Uh, yeah. Bazinga. Uh, Teku Murray says, yeah, like, like who cares? And then somebody Eric Gilbert. Somebody said F you Teku. Yeah, <laughs> that was me. Uh, Raji Beer Ventures. Nice breakdown, Ashley. Uh, Ashley Sexton said, thank you, Sir Rod. Uh, and then Rod oh. J. Beer Ventures gives a thumbs up, and then they exchange numbers. Uh, Eric <laughs> Gilbert, almost as good as Flying Monkey's Juicy Ass. Uh, Ashley Sexton says, almost, Eric, almost. And then they exchange numbers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sexton. Somebody's asking a juicy ass. Eric, Eric Gilbert says, LOL. Uh, 
Uh, Lee Russell says, what's next week's beer, guys? Yeah. Technically, somebody from the audience did ask for next week's beer, but we'll get that to the moment. And then uh, Beer Burglar says, I can't read what he said. Pen, your pen is your pen is huge. Your pen is huge. Yes. yes. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Kill some time. I still got to do the artwork. I'm working on it. I'm making this thing extra special. Wow. Let's get let's get some more comments. I'm, I'm I'm borrowing from Jamie and his uh, his MS Paint skills. Mm -hmm. Eric Gilbert says, "Bales." Bales. <laughs> Bales. Maybe he's a farmer. He's got to get the hay in. Well, hey, now, girl. You would have another comment, except he's gone to bed. It's past his bedtime at this point. Oh, he finished his prune juice. He finished his prune juice. <laughs> hey, he's got to stay regular, True. right? I wonder if I Mr. Lysak, I wonder if Mr. Lysak, like the hairs on the back of his head were kind of like if he felt kind of a shiver kind of thing with all the talk about Okay, number five tonight. Oh, like I, he, I would say so. Like Definitely he was, possible. You know, just wherever he is in his kitchen or whatever, and he just, hmm, what was, what's, what's that? It's hmm. like that, yeah. that feeling you get when uh, they used to say, like, uh, like someone walked some, on your grave or something. Yeah, when you something. Get that cold shiver, like the one I got last so, night when Ted Cruz got elected. <laughs> when something you know, so and, uh, dear to you just gets mentioned a lot, you. <laughs> Go and buy some orange juice and <laughs> dump some vodka in it. And there you go. There's IP. Because why not? <laughs> no, that's, isn't that life in the clouds? It's like just buy no. some bottle of juice and just dump. No, that's, um, that's the one Redbeard fun. likes. Liquid Fart Fest. Yeah, it's Liquid, liquid Fart, fart Fest. fest. Yeah. I believe yeah, liquid, liquid Fart Fest was actually pretty. Anyway. Um, all right. So we are already. I don't have a sponsor tonight, but let's just get over to the scores. Extra special Sexton graphic Brewing. tonight, even with blue colors. We've got Life in the Clouds, 7.2 for style, 7.35 overall. Wow. So Nick torpedoed that score. Yep. I'm pretty sure I brought that way down. It's like the, the epitome of mediocrity. It's about, yeah, 3.25 out of 5 for me. There we go. All right. So, yeah, next so week's beer. I, I believe there was next a, a question about next week's beer in the comments, and uh, I did say last month that we were going to make November Macrovember because we did Craftober, which we, we already did, fucked uh, whole, up. Thanks, yeah, Nick. we yeah, and we've already fucked it up because <clears throat> hey, well, Craig was able to get this beer, and we figured IPA better do it fresh, but we are still intent on doing a bunch of macros now. Um, not for an uh, extended period of time. Eventually, I want to do uh, go back to that whole macro micro cycle that we had going on before. I, I think they're getting upset. Yeah, the locals anyway, are starting to rage. Yeah, well, look at how many people we were able to get on. Usually, the macro weeks are the most watched and also the most attended. Uh, but anyway, next week's beer, we're going to Japan for uh, for a week, and we're gonna do Sapporo. Konnichiwa, bitches. Konnichiwa, bitches. All right. And I actually kind of noticed it's got this neat star uh, pop tab on it. Anyway, small things amuse small. All right. Uh, do we have any more comments? Any, anybody else want to say some last words? There's a couple of uh, insults towards Nick. Oh, I'm, I'm willing to bet there is. Especially if Taku Murray work. says, Taint, then Nick wants macro for the views week. I believe that. Nick's totally into the views. Sell out. And then he says you're a sell. Yeah, because yeah, my just... channel's totally fucking monetized. Well, why is somebody who gets his ass wiped every day, like three times a day, why is he so grumpy? I wish I had somebody wipe my butt for me. I'd be in a much I better mood. I wouldn't have a care in a world if I wore He even has yeah. one of those, like the, you, he doesn't have to go up the stairs. He has, you know, like in uh, Gremlins, that <laughs> chair thing you sit in. Oh, yeah. To take him up upstairs after he watches the news. The local news. <laughs> the local news. After his prune juice. Prune juice news. Yeah, prune juice lift, juice. lift chair. Let's go. Yeah. And don't forget the Excedrin. Or, or yeah. what do you call it? The daily dosage. Uh, daily dose aspirin. Fucking after e after eating his, his pigtails and sauerkraut. Mm. <laughs> Sounds Fucking delicious. Kraut muncher. Whoa. I think uh, that's a little racist. Kraut? Wow. I say kraut. Wow. Sauerkraut. 
<laughs> anyway, uh, what, you guys don't like your taco and sausages? I did not see that coming. Uh, Sapporo, Sapporo is cool. Have yeah. not had in mega years. Yeah, I'll be mega honest. Year? I'm actually kind of inter- excited because I, I did used to like a Sapporo. It was a decent uh, lager for... Uh, I mean, I always found lagers boring, but this one had the nice... If I yeah, recall cool. correctly, nice dry case. And you remember the uh, the uh, like the like the ones that had the flat sides, the big cans you could use to knock out people? You could use them as a weapon. I wish they had those old cans, but... Yeah, I used to like Molson Canadian once upon a time. It's funny how things change. And the last comment is from Yurt, who said, I had kraut for lunch yesterday. Delish. So, yeah, I had some on a sandwich last week. All right, well, let's just whip them out, boys. All right, let's whip the crowd out. All right. Uh, yeah, so I think we're done. Beer analysis for one week, and we will return next week with Sapporo. Thanks Good for all the job. comments. Yep. Exactly. And we're yes. going to go offline. And yeah, yeah. just penis. Uh,